Now, this is a, somewhat of a continuation from my previous video, and I'm going to link this one to that one um, as a response. And of, I just want to talk about evolution again, as you know, the one thing I pretty much like to talk about on this channel most of the times. This common creationistic view that there's no evidence for evolution, come on. The evidence for evolution is overwhelming. We find, evi we find evidence in the fossil record for evolution. And specifically I'm talking about the diversity of the diversification of life through over time from common ancestor in this case. We find evidence for that in the fossil record. We find evidence for that in our genes. We find evidence for that in our morphologies. We find evidence for that in our chemical makeup. We find evidence for this common descent everywhere we look. If you go to any uh, peer-reviewed journal in regards to biology, there is paper after paper written and accepted dealing with evolutionary mechanisms, observed evolutionary aspects. For instance, we observe speciation all the time. We observe speciation so much that we have about five different terms relating to it. Things like sympatric and allopatric and so on. We even have different mechanisms now because, well, we realize there's a lot more. There's not just natural selection, but there's also ge genetic drift. There's the uh, founder effect, etc. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, when it comes to evidence for evolution, the theory, not the process, because the process is uh, it cannot be, um, excuse me, the process cannot be contradicted. The process is observed all the time. We see changes in allele frequencies in every species over time. That is, by definition, evolution. And we see this. So evolution as a process, absolute fact. Evolution as a theory is so well supported. In many ways, it's actually better supported than theories we have in regards to gravity. And no one's going to complain that gravity hasn't been proven. If you doubt gravity, jump off a small, jump off a short house. I don't want you getting hurt too badly, but I think it makes a good lesson. So, this, they keep bringing this up, that there's no evidence for evolution. This is truly, let's stick our heads in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist to the extreme. All our medicines currently today being produced are dependent on our understanding of evolutionary mechanisms and the pathogens that we're fighting and even the genetic disorders that we're attempting to alleviate or eventually get rid of. <laughs> Excuse me. Bacteria evolve to become resistant to uh, antibiotics. Genetics, the very mechanism, the very machinery of evolutionary change is allowing us to understand how diseases like Huntington's disease and ALS behave, act, and what we may be able to do in the future to eliminate them completely in the population. Evolution is one of the most powerful fields of science out there. And having an understanding of it allows us to have an understanding of nature and allows us to basically manipulate nature to help ourselves. This goes back to the morality thing, you know, dealing with communities. So basically, it becomes almost, a mo since community, since morality is meant to support and improve and continue community and the invi and individuals of that community, evolution and the theory of evolution and the teaching of it and the understanding of it and the supporting of it, even with all, you know, even if there's competing sub-theories within the field of evolution, becomes almost a moral imperative for the survival of our own species. In the future, we're going to need more food.
only, there's only two ways we can get more food. Either we take more land from nature, which disrupts ecosystems and can lead to major climatic, uh, climatic problems, such as the Dust Bowls, well, that wasn't entirely our fault, but the Dust Bowl back in the 1920s, or we have to engineer our food to produce more per plant. Ways of doing that, of course, is through genetic engineering, which will probably be the common way of doing it, and through agricultural evolution of these um, plant-based organisms, which we've been doing for the last 7,000 years or so. So, again, I'm sorry, creationists, Christians that don't like evolution, I'm going to say it outright, you're wrong. And if you teach your kids that evolution is false, you're damaging their future. If you're trying to install creationism into the classroom, you're damaging our future. Now, this isn't hyperbole. This happens. The Roman Empire, very powerful empire, now, it came to its knees for a couple of reasons. One of them was it overstretched itself, but also because superstitious religious views became predominant. Not just Christian, but other ones as well. And that crushed the Roman culture. We had the Dark Ages following that. The Islamic Empire of the uh, seven, 700s AD, very large empire, it dealt it had a great academia. A lot of what we have today is from those Muslims of that time. None of what we have today are from the Muslims generally around today, except for those that are educated in the West. Well, that might be a little stretch. I apologize. I shouldn't have put it that way. I should have thought one, that one out, but I'm rattling this stuff off from the top of my head. But the superstitious nature and the hyper-religiosity of the Muslim world destroyed their academia. And what we have, what we had, what they've had for millennia now, well, it's really been nothing more than, you know, agrarian culture with no real improvement. That's the threat religion has. We can point to the past where religion has destroyed or severely weakened a culture and a civilization because it's become too predominant within what that culture needs to have, which is basically knowledge of existence, knowledge of our universe, and how do we manipulate our local surroundings with that knowledge. And it is in that why I say I'm not creating a hyperbole here when I say religion and creationism is a threat to our future. You may think it's right to teach your kids that evolution is false, but if they hold to that and they become a doctor, they won't believe that bacteria have evolved resistance to an antibiotic, and they'll continue using an antibiotic that's ineffective. Now well, that's maybe a little bit extreme, but the potential is there. Look at the Christian scientists. I mean, they don't use our, they don't use any medicine because they think all they need is faith. And kids die all the time from treatable diseases like diabetes because of that kind of religious insanity. So, creationists, you're wrong. Evolution occurs. We have exceptional evidence for it. Predictions derived from the theory are proven, well, are verified all the time. Tiktaalik's a great example of that. Read Shubin's book, Your Inner Fish, if you want to know that story. But you're wrong. You're wrong about your morality, because your absolute moralities leave no room for well, any gray areas, and apparently it's actually a relative morality because you have two sets, human morality and God's morality. Which one do we follow? Well, we 
apparently we can't attain God's morality, so we can only follow the human morality. So where do we define what? How do we define good and bad? Oh well, I'm kind of rambling here, so I'm gonna go ahead and quit. You guys have a good day.